let us discuss about human respiratory system today now in human respiratory system we have a pair of external nostrils these are external nostrils also called external nares there are a pair of external nostrils present at the tip of the nose above the lips through external nostril air is inhaled inside now external nostrils opens into nasal cavities so this is the nasal cavity one pair of nasal cavities are present both the nasal cavities are separated by nasal septum in between the two nasal cavities at the center there is a nasal septum now the nasal cavities itself nasal cavities can be divided into three parts one is the vestibular part at the beginning it is called as the vestibular part the vestibular part contains hair and sebaceous glands hair is useful for filtering the dust particles followed by respiratory part followed by respiratory part so middle area is that almost that rough area that area is called as respiratory part the respiratory part contains of three twisted bones called as conchae also called turbinals concha means shell a, a snail shell is spring shaped concha also is the spirally twisted you can see one two three concha there the conchae are also called concha singular conchae plural turbinals conchae or turbinals now respiratory part the conchae there are three in number one is the superior conchae other is the middle conchae other is the inferior conchae the one at the top is superior conchae the one at the bottom is inferior conchae one at the middle is called that's the middle conchae superior conchae is also called nasoturbinal inferior conchae also called maxilloturbinal middle conchae is also called ethmoturbinal naso turbinal ethmo turbinal which is present on the lateral side naso turbinal present on the superior side and maxillo turbinal which is present on the inferior side naso turbinal and ethmo turbinal they are parts of ethmoid bone an ethmoid bone is present in between the orbits and nasal cavities you can see in between the orbits and the nasal cavity you can see an ethmoid bone and coming from the ethmoid bone there is a vertical projection at the center which enters into the nasal septum partly and they also form the first two turbinals also the inferior nasal conchae they are separate bones actually now the conchae or turbinals these are covered by pseudo stratified epithelium and they are acting like air conditioners so air is more air is humidified air is moistened air is softened and filtered see this process occur in the respiratory part the last part is the olfactory part the terminal ridge so somewhere there you will find the olfactory part yeah so that's the olfactory part olfactory part 
from the olfactory part originates cranial nerve number one olfactory nerve so you can see olfactory epithelium the so sensory epithelium is originate from that sensory epithelium originates cranial nerve number one which goes to the brain and inside the olfactory part you will see Bowman's glands the glands are called Bowman's glands Bowman's glands pro produce mucus the Bowman's glands contains immunoglobulin A IgA and lysozyme these are secreted by Bowman's glands immunoglobulin A type of antibody a lysosome which is antibacterial in action so these are produced from Bowman's glands so that's the composition of nasal cavities the nasal cavities later open into pharynx Now pharynx is divided into three parts. One is nasopharynx. See, this previously we discussed the nasal cavities. This nasal cavity is, is present above the heart palate. See, this is the heart palate. Now this is the buccal cavity. mouth cavity or buccal cavity nasal cavity both are separated by heart palate anteriorly it is heart palate posteriorly it is the soft palate so th this area is the soft palate so that is the soft palate now this area where bones are absent that is the soft palate this area which contains palatine and maxilla palatines and maxillae where bones are present that's the hard palate hard palate separates buccal cavity from nasal cavity soft palate separates the remaining part of the pharynx now the area of pharynx the area of pharynx above above the soft palate you call it soft palate because it is not containing any bones and it is simply made up of muscles soft palate is continuation of hard palate soft palate is also called primary palate it is the true palate the hard palate is called as secondary palate or pseudo palate or false palate now the part present above the soft palate this is the soft palate and that area above the soft palate is called as nasopharynx so nasopharynx includes all this area where i have represented it by represented it by a cross lines that area is the nasopharynx the first part is the nasopharynx from the nasal cavities through internal nostrils you may have a pair of internal nostrils here so these are external nostrils these are internal nostrils through internal nostrils air from nasal cavities enters into nasopharynx internal nostrils are also called coine so they are internal nostrils Internal nostrils are also called coine. In case of fishes, where in generally in fishes internal nostrils are absent, but there is a group of fishes where internal nostril is present. So that group is called coinic. This coine means internal nostril. Ic this means fish. So likewise here also we have internal nostrils. Through internal nostrils, air enters into nasopharynx. Eustachian canals also open into nasopharynx. 
Eustachian canal or Eustachian tubes. So it is a tube-like structure which is coming from the middle ear. So that also opens into the nasopharynx. And inside the nasopharynx we also find something called as pharyngeal tonsils, also called adenoids. Now, a continuation of that pharyngeal, that nasopharynx, see area present beneath the soft palate, area present beneath the soft palate is called oropharynx. There's a second part, oropharynx. Beneath the soft palate, that area of pharynx is called as oropharynx. Inside the oropharynx, you will find palatine tonsils, but that is part of digestive system. Now, both the oropharynx and nasopharynx combinedly open into this common chamber. This common chamber is called laryngopharynx. So that common chamber is called as laryngopharynx. Now laryngopharynx, it has got two openings. One is opening for esophagus. So that's that's for esophagus. So food food coming from this side will enter into esophagus. But the air coming from this direction, air coming from that direction will enter into this air tube, that air tube is called as trachea. So, from external nostrils, air enters into nasopharynx. From nasopharynx, air will finally enter into laryngopharynx. This, this laryngopharynx is a common chamber into which both nasopharynx and oropharynx, both of them open. And from laryngopharynx, so the air will later come into that wind pipe called as trachea. At the beginning of trachea, you can see larynx. So larynx is located somewhere there. So location is at the anterior region. And the larynx and that opening there, that opening there is called as glottis. At the beginning of the trachea itself, that opening is called as glottis. It is covered by a cartilage and that cartilage is called as epiglottis. Now when food is coming from this direction, the food can also enter into trachea. To prevent that from happening, there is a flap of elastic cartilage that is called as epiglottis. This is epiglottis, this is glottis. Epiglottis covers glottis. So it's not allowing the food to enter inside. So we are not bothered about that food now. When you are seeing about the human respiratory system, so air from external nostrils, nasal cavities, internal nostrils, nasopharynx, laryngopharynx, glottis, it will finally come into trachea.